Good morning. Good morning. God bless everyone. I pray all is well with you. Um, today, um, I want to just give a testimony about paying attention and following the vision. So earlier today, I saw a man in a blanket wrapped in plastic so he had a blanket on top of him over his head over his you know whole body and he had plastic on top of this blanket <sighs> and so of course instantly i felt concerned i told a couple people about it but um you know after i passed him by you know i passed him by because I was in a rush trying to hurry up and get to my my daughter, taking her to work. But I said, you know, if he's still there, I wanted to go by, by, back past to make sure he was okay. Because I've never seen anybody, you know, like that in plastic, you know, unless they were dead. So it scared me, you know. So anyways, um, I left and... Um, after dropping off my daughter went back and um, but as I was passing I talked with God about it you know I was telling I said Lord I just pray that he's okay I don't know who it is a woman or a man but I just pray that they're all right we're sitting on a bench and it's cold outside so you know I was really concerned um and I'm thinking, like, can this man breathe? Because he's in, in plastic, you know? Like, he got plastic over him along with this blanket. Like, how do how can he breathe is what I'm thinking. And so, anyways, I went back. And I seen him, like, um, I would see him normally. I would see him, you know, he just kind of, like, appeared a couple, of, like, last week that I've seen. And walking around, you know, and... um down there in that in that little area and so I was just, you know like first I didn't know if it was a woman or a man you know but it was it's the same person it's been the same person this whole time so anyways um in my heart you know I wanted to get him a tent I was like he needs like at least a tent or something and I didn't I didn't have you know the type of money to like put him up in hotels and do all this and do all that or get him a house you know so I'm just thinking like he needs a tent or something you know like something that he could stay in to, to keep him warm you know because it's cold it's getting cold and um so I asked God about it. I was like, God, I really want to get him a tent. Like, what should I do? And, and I heard for me to give him $50. And then I saw a vision of money blowing in the wind. So I didn't understand it at first. I was like, okay, you said give me, give him $50. So at first, you know, I started to go to um the house lay down because i had just got off work at one o'clock in the morning i'm up like at at six taking my daughter to work and so well actually five so i didn't get much rest so i'm thinking like i need to go to sleep <laughs> and but i was so afraid that he would move so i didn't want him to move i wanted to to get it to him you know what i'm saying and so i went on to the atm and got the money and went back to his location and i said excuse me three times the oh, the whole while you know he had his back turned towards me and, and so uh i seen him looking through his things and I saw him grab a pair of scissors so <laughs> of course I didn't get out the car thankfully and I cracked the window so I didn't have it down very far 
And so I just drop the the money on the ground. And I saw his eyes cut towards the money. And then I drove off. So I knew that he saw it, you know. And if he saw it, he'll get it, you know, if he really needs it or wants it. And so um, I started thinking it over. And I realized why God didn't tell me to hand him anything. He didn't tell me to buy the tent. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he said, give him $50. And then he showed me the vision of the money, of money blowing in the wind. (laughs) You know, and so as soon as he grabbed those scissors, I instantly knew, oh, shoot, you know, I I better... um, Better not get out the car. Better not roll this window down even more. Uh, Let me just drop this money. (laughs) So, um, I know it's crazy, but it's also mercy. The craziest thing is I watched the movie Unhinged the day before. And he looked a whole lot like the man actually playing the role. And um, I also realized everybody on the streets are not on the streets for the same purpose some are murderers thieves foreigners robbers mentally ill um some have chosen this life you know they they've chosen this lifestyle so while others are just really in a bad situation you know you got others that have other issues and so Therefore, everybody's not looking for a handout or even a hand up. You know, um, I was just thinking about what if, you know, what if I would have acted off my emotions? That situation could have ended up bad. You know, I could have reached out my hand or got out the car. Instead, I paid attention and followed the vision. Then it dawned on me. Literally, pay attention, follow the vision. Then it brought me back to um, the dream that I had of the Lord where um, in September the 18th, I did a podcast on this where I had a dream about a man and the man had a dream. And the closer the man got to what he saw in the dream, He would touch whatever that thing was that he saw in the dream that was happening in his life right then and there. And as he touched it, the next thing he would see was a vision. And in the vision, he was holding a Bible and on the lower left corner of that Bible was the blood. And I saw a date stamp. And if you go back, to that um, replay and and listen to it. It talks about this vision in detail. And um, I saw where he came into a lot of money. And as he came into the money, he touched it. And he saw the vision of the Bible and the date stamped in red. So what I figured out was we don't, Always understand what, when, why, okay? All we know is, and all I know, is today that the Lord showed me the importance of paying attention and following the vision. So whatever, whatsoever you do, make sure you pay attention and follow the vision. He'll show you what to do and how to do it. Like, don't move off of your emotions and your feelings. Um, I was thinking like, Lord, have mercy. What if an elderly person would have gotten out the car? Like, or somebody, you know, trying to be sweet and, and do something for this man. And what if, you know, he would have done something to him, you know, you just never know. You never know. You know, so don't act off your your emotions. A lot of people, they see people on the streets. They just want to give. They want to do this. They want to do that. But make sure you 
you're asking the Lord even, should I? You know, if I should, should I do this or should I go or, you know, ask him first before you do it. Pay attention. Follow his instructions within the vision. Whatever you're seeing, follow those instructions. Pay attention and follow the vision. Habakkuk 2 and 2 is which which is what I had um, on the previous um, podcast on um, that dream that I had. Uh, Habakkuk 2 and 2, it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and lie not. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass. It it will surely come. It will not tarry. It will surely come. It will not tarry. It's going to come to pass. Whatever the vision is whatever the dream of the Lord is whatever he has shown you you know as we listen to his instructions you know he'll consistently bring back that vision the ultimate goal whatever it is that he has for you whatever he has for you to do listen pay attention Pay attention to how he tells you to do things. You know, don't act off of your emotions and your feelings. Pray and ask the Lord, Lord, should I? Um, There was a song that I used to sing when I was a kid, and I think I've mentioned it before. I'll go if I have to go by myself. You know, I don't mind. If, it, if I got to go by myself and my mama won't go, my daddy won't go, my sister, brother, my my children, I'll go on, I'll go on. If I have to go by myself, you know, as a child, I sang that song. It didn't say anything about the children, but you know what I mean. I sang that song, you know, and um, and I meant it with my heart, though I didn't understand it. And I didn't really know what that entailed. I didn't know all the things that I would have to, would, that I would endure, not have to, because had I been paying attention and following the vision, it's a lot of things, a lot of mistakes. You know, I shot straight through warnings. You know, the word said warning comes before destruction. You know, sometimes we... We might even have a gut feeling something is going to happen if I, but we'll ignore it and things happen. And then we question God or we question why. And so mm, all I got to say is pay attention. Follow the visions to stop dismissing stuff. You know, sometimes we just dismiss things all the time. God will be trying to speak to us in different ways, you know, and instead of us listening, instead of us, you know, doing um, what the Lord is calling us to do or showing us to do or showing us how to do it, because sometimes we mess up. Because we do things our way instead of the way of the Lord. You know, that's a big one for me. I don't know about nobody else, but I've made those mistakes often. And I had to go back and say, Lord, forgive me. You know, I repent. I shouldn't have did it that way. That's not your way. You know, his ways are higher. And so, you know, he's constantly reminding me to come up higher constantly reminding me to come up higher so pay attention um i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna want to tell you something that the lord gave me yesterday and he says some people 
He was showing me how some people mishandle the word. Others mishandle money. There were two. Then there are those who mishandle people. So you got those that mishandle the word of God. You got those that mishandle money. And then you got those that mishandle people. Rather it be children husbands, wives, friends, and so on. You know, my prayer is that those I love and even those I come in contact with will learn to handle me the right way. I pray that, you know, not only will they handle me, but you as well uh, the right way. I pray that, you know, I'll do the same. And I had uh, written, you know, Psalms 51 and 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of salvation, And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness, O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delighteth not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, will thou not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thy build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thy Pay attention. Follow the vision. Help us, Father, to pay attention and follow your vision, not ours, not the ones that are of our own selves, but God, not not the ones, you know, that are of our flesh or not the ones that are of um, our soul but the ones of the spirit your vision father your your vision your your vision father help us oh god to follow your vision and not only follow your vision but father help us not to mishandle your word not to mishandle money and not to mishandle people no matter who they are whether they be close near or far father help us God in the mighty name of Jesus create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us Oh God, cast us not away from thy presence. And I thank you, Lord, that your word says that your Holy Spirit, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Continuously restore unto us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with your free spirit help us 
to teach people, transgressors, your ways and sinners so that they may be converted unto you. Deliver us from blood guiltiness, O God, our God, the God of our salvation, and our tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open your lips, open up my lips and my mouth so that it shall show forth your praise. Thank you, Lord, that you already made the sacrifice. And that you didn't delight in burnt offerings or sacrifices. But that you prepared a body. And through your son, Jesus Christ. Your word says that if we believe on him. That you had froze him. That, you know, they, that he died for our sins and that. On the third days, you rose him up from the dead that we will be saved if we just believe. So, Father, we thank you, Father, that we believe. And I thank you, Lord God, for a changed heart. Thank you, Lord, for a clean heart and renewing a right spirit within us. That it not be any other spirit, Father, but your spirit. And that we will learn to walk in your ways. Talk in your ways. That we'll learn not to mishandle people or anything that you place in our hands. That we will not take advantage of that. Or that we will not misuse it or mishandle it. Mishandle your word. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us, God, to continuously surrender unto you and to do your will. Father, touch every heart that is listening on today and that will listen to the replay. Father, touch the hearts and the minds of your people. Father, renew our minds, God. Help us, God, to be loving one towards another help us not to do things in our own will or in our own way but father help us to do it in your way your will hallelujah not by might nor by power but father by your spirit god we thank you for your spirit we thank you father for what you did on the cross for our sins through Christ Jesus and that we are no longer underneath the yoke of bondage under the law under the letter, letter for the letter killeth hallelujah but I thank you father that now we have grace and we have mercy and through your word we have life father everlasting through Christ Jesus thank you father for everything that you've done on that cross through Christ Jesus that we are now Lord converted Lord God and that we are now sons and daughters of yours father I thank you that you love us thank you Lord God for never leaving us nor forsaking us thank you father for your goodness and for your mercy for your gentleness oh God thank you Lord Hallelujah, from times when we didn't deserve it yet. Hallelujah, you still, still show mercy on us. You still shown your love towards us. Oh, Father, even when we don't deserve it yet, you've shown us. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. I we thank you for your long suffering. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for never giving up on us. 
thank you for for a heart of repentance forgive us lord the high for every transgression every i thank you father how you forgave us sorry for all of our transgressions and our sins through the power of your blood through christ jesus thank you for nailing it to the cross hallelujah thank you lord thank you for your love and your grace that you've shown on us thank you father for new mercies every morning and i thank you god for showing your act of kindness towards that man through your love that you will place it on our heart, my heart to give to him and i pray father that you will continuously help us show us how to help one another whatever that need is god that you will feel it all those that are on the streets whether they be beggars or not god that you will come through for them and that you will do only what what you can do what you can do only what you can do thank you for your love and your grace i pray that you will be with him that you will speak with him hallelujah that you will lead him and guide him into your truth that you will bring him into your bosom god that you will just show your love towards him and every person that's on the streets and may be homeless god that your love will continue to dwell with them and that you will continue to cover them show your mercy towards them god in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name no matter what no matter what the situation is the reason why they're there God, the fact, the very fact that they're there, and it could be me, it could be anyone. And so, God, I just pray that you will stretch your hand out and help them, help us to help one another, help us, Father, change the hearts of your people change the hearts of men and just lead us and guide us into your truth like only you can only you can and I just bless your name God help us God to pay attention and to follow to follow your instructions follow your vision not the one we create in our own minds for our own self but the vision that you have for us and towards us in Jesus mighty name thank God and amen this you all was such an experience yet I'm on this journey with him with the father and you know as we walk and do the will of the father you never know what or who you may come in contact with you just never know you just have to trust God in it all trust him trust him and I know he's making ways he's going to make a way out of no way all for all those that are suffering right now those that are hurt 
right now. Whatever they're going through. I thank God for the comforter. And that comforter. He said that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So no matter what you're going through. Whatever yoke of bondage that's on you. God is able to deliver you. God is able to do it. You know, sometimes we see things and we get comfortable with overlooking. Overlooking. We get comfortable with letting somebody else do it. Because if we really, really looked, we realized, man, it's a lot of things that needs to be done in this world. But sometimes we, we see it so big that we don't want to do it. And we want somebody else to do it. It will just be so much easier to let someone else do it. But what if God wants to use you? What if God wants to do it through you? Are you willing? Are you willing to surrender and allow him to do it through you? That's the question. That, that is the question. So, trust God. No, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. If he shows you to do something or tells you to do something, I'm telling you, won't no harm come to you. Do it how he tells you to do it. Don't do it out of your own will, your own flesh, your own emotions. But allow the Holy Spirit to do it through you. It's crazy. The other day, um, the Holy Spirit that gave me, he was showing me a house. You know, people, they'll see people and they'll just say, oh, they just showing out. You know, they just, they just showing off. You know what I'm saying? And they, you know, downplay so much. And he showed me, no, they ain't showing off. They're showing up. You know, um, you get a lot of jealousy when people show up. <laughs> There's been people showing up for a long time, but not always for the right reasons. Some people have yet to go through their own deliverance. Some people have yet to go through um, a heart change. You know, they don't have the heart of God. They don't have that love. And so they're just showing up because nobody else is. You know, it's just an open, vacant space. Not that they want to do it. May not even have no love for it. But maybe they just like to be seen. There are those. But then there's those that when they show up, God shows out. It makes a difference. You know, you can show up, but who are you showing up with? Are you showing up in yourself? You know, he was showing me, like, even with different prophets, different pastors, different teachers, preachers, you know, uh, evangelists, and just the different folds. How some people, you know, operate. In their flesh, some people operate in the soulish realm. And then you got some people who operate in the spiritual realm. You know, then you got some that do all. You know, some some people depend on the date. They may be in the spirit today. Tomorrow they might be in the flesh. Tomorrow, the next day they might be operating in the soul. And, uh. See, the flesh, the flesh 
desires the things of the flesh. The flesh looks at flesh and then they judge accordingly. Um, the soul, when you are going by your soul, is more so um, what you may be feeling what that person desires or needs in their soul. But then when you're going by the spirit of the Lord, the spirit is going to tell you his desires for you. Not so much so much about yours, what you want. You might mention it. But it's mainly going to be focused on his desires for you, right? You know, when a pastor operates in the flesh, a lot of times he's looking at the congregation. And what he don't like. When he's operating in the spirit, he's going by God's desires and what he likes or dislikes. You know what I mean? It's different. It's a difference. So let's Let's go over here. Um, to First Corinthians two and eleven. Let's see, it says, For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So there's two separate operations. Now, I didn't know I was going to go there, so I had to look this up real quick. But anyways, there's two separate, there's two operations here. You got three, like I said, really. Because uh, the flesh, I'm telling you, um, there's people who prophesy and they look at a person and they size them up based on what they look like, the shoes they wear, their hair, you know. And then they go off the flesh as to what to tell that person or they might pick up on that person's spirit and they and they could feel the desires not to say that they can't just be moving by another spirit because they they can also go by a familiar spirit as well but then you got those that are moving and grooving through the spirit of the lord you know his spirit and his desires and he can bring back to you your soulish desires. Not to say that he can't do that because he can't. He bring it back to you, but then he'll tell you his desires for you. You know, this is what you want, but this is what the, so the Lord, he wants for you. You know, and so we got to note that too. But anyways, I'm telling you, y'all. I'm telling you this word. 
when it comes down to doing things the right way, God's way. You know, not mishandling people, going, saying you're moving through the spirit and here you're just egging on people through the spirit of the man. You know what I'm saying? Knowing what man wants to hear. Okay, that's what I'm mishandling the word of God and mishandling his people because there are repercussions for mishandling God's word and God's people. And so you got to be careful for nothing, you know, and we got to stay in prayer and stay in tune, try to stay in alignment with the Lord, you know, constantly. I have to go before the Lord, Father, forgive me, help me, Lord God, to to stay in tune with your will. I don't want to move off of my emotions and my desires on what I want and what I want to do and all that other stuff. No, just help me to be uh, in complete surrender unto you. Sometimes it may hurt. You know, sometimes you may want to do this. But God will pull you back and say, no, I don't want you doing that. I want you to do this. And we have to be obedient. You know, sometimes you might get up, you got your your sermon ready, and you want to preach about something you done seen in the church, and you want to really address that thing. But the Holy Spirit is nudging on you to speak on something totally different. Maybe he wants you to speak on the heart. And how we need a, a clean heart. And we need a heart of flesh so that we can show that love one towards another like Christ spoke on. And so that they'll know that we are his disciples. How else are they going to know who we represent if we're not showing forth God's love? And we're just moving and grooving out of our own will and our own emotions. And we're doing the desires of our own heart instead of surrendering and allowing God. Letting his desires and his will come forth out of our lives. I mean, it's so much that we can complain about. So much, you know, we can be murmuring about. But God, you know, a lot of us just, I just believe we just need to let, it's like that soul let go and let God have his way. Stop trying to make it be about us and allow it to be about God. Let us bring God first. Father, what you said first. Let's, let's make it be all about him. Not our will, but God, your will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you say. Let that be so. You know we want to make it be all about everything else. But no let it be all about him. You know let it. Let us move by his spirit. And come up higher. To where he would have for us to be. Not in that stage of self self pleasure you know we could complain all day lord this ain't right lord that ain't right but have you thought about the things that are right that's going right the fact that you have a roof over your head the fact that you have food in your refrigerator you know the fact that uh, you have uh Maybe possibly a car to drive or the fact that you have a job to go to. Some people wish they had a job. Some people can't get one for one reason or another. Some people, you know, wish they had a vehicle or maybe they're complaining about the vehicle they got. Whatever the case may be. Help. Lord, just help us, God, to to not complain so much. Help us not to talk about and put each other down. If 
finding ways to put a person down. It's it's funny how times, you know, you can go even to your loved ones. And as soon as you turn your back, you get a stab wound. You know, because everybody, I don't care who they are. We all need the love of Christ in our hearts. You know, we need that heart of flesh that we, where we care, Lord. Help us, Lord, to have more compassion one towards another. Not doing things just to be seen or even heard. But really seriously doing things according to your good pleasure. Doing it just for you and only you. You know, not for fame or fortune or trying to get rich and pimping God's people. And, but to do it for his glory. You know, God has ways in his word on how to do th different things. And if we would just apply that thing, I, I believe our lives would go so much smoother. Things would just be so much different. I know we struggle here and there. But who hasn't? You know, you go through the word of God, you see a lot of struggling. But he still didn't leave them. You know, in the Old Testament, you may have seen God's spirit go away from one. But, you know, he also showed where it didn't leave another. You know, he knows our hearts. He knows everything about us. He knows everything. Everything. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. God knows. He knows everything about you. He knows what you struggle with. He knows where you're struggling in. He knows everything. There's nothing God don't know. There's nothing he don't know. Just like there's nothing he can't do. Nothing. And I just pray that we will learn to trust him when he speaks to you, that you will listen and that you'll know the difference between yourself, your heart, your desires, your emotions, and God's heart, his desires, his emotions, what he's saying. got to change the way we think. You know, Lord, renew our minds. Give us the mind of Christ. Help us to acknowledge the mind of Christ that's already within us. And not to fight against the grain. Because a lot of it is fighting. I know there's this song, and I can't think of his name right now. But I love it. You know, he talks about that potter and the clay. And he made a statement that, you know, he was with a potter. And how you knew when the clay was ready, when it stops fighting you. Oh, when it stops fighting against the grain when it stops fighting and a lot of us God is trying to make changes but for some reason we keep fighting him we keep fighting the change we keep fighting against it instead of fighting for it fighting for it we keep fighting opposite it's like when he tried to pull the people out of Egypt. 
how the people started fighting him. How the people started fighting him. Complaining. Saying, you know, we we had quail in Egypt. You know, and here this man, and what are we supposed to do with all this man? You know, they didn't even want that. They didn't really even realize how much better that manna was for them, what it was doing for them. Somebody had to realize because they wrote it. But I'm saying, did they appreciate it? You know, or did they just continue to fight and want to go back to where they came from? And that's how it is with us. When God's trying to make changes in our lives. Instead of us fighting for it, we fight against it. We try to go backward instead of moving forward. <laughs> some of it be them spirits. Just some of it is just our will. It's what we choose to do, what we want to do. You know, and uh, a lot of us don't like change. We want to keep doing what we've been doing forever and God's trying to mold us and shape us but we keep fighting him and not just letting him be God over our lives you know and so I had thought about that man and I said oh my goodness yes this is I see it I understand I thank him for what he put out there because it's so true. He talked about that that dirt and he talked about how whew, how um when um the potter say for instance you're you got that clay and you're molding it and you mess up are you supposed to throw it away? What are you supposed to do with it? And he said, a true potter, no matter how it looks like, it can dry up, it can be turned to dust, whatever. A true potter knows how to mold it back. You know, a true potter can still do something with that clay and so you know that the Bible talks about him having many vessels some in 2 Timothy to 20 and it's it says I always you know read the King James version it says but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. So there's many vessels. He said in 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also useful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. With all, 
with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But the main part that I wanted to read was about the vessels. There's so many different vessels that the Lord has made and you have to acknowledge that they're all for the master's use because all things work together right all things I don't care what it is everything is working together For your good. And we got to acknowledge that. Let's go. Let's go to that scripture real quick. In Romans 8 and 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And as you read the word of God, you see everything, everyone has its purpose. Doesn't matter whatsoever you're seeing, what you think you know. <laughs> it's still a purpose. It's still a purpose. The good, the bad, everything is working together. It didn't say, oh, well, all, the only thing that that's working is this or that no it's at all things going back to what I spoke about the different ways that we um, work you know, whether it be prophet or evangelist or whatnot. It said in eight Romans eight, therefore there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. So I was telling you, you know, there are those that are that work in the flesh. But after the spirit, we're not talking about the spirit of man. We're talking about the spirit of God. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, right? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the light of sinful flesh and for sin condemn sin in the flesh he had to come here to condemn sin in the flesh that's why he came so that he could liberate us pull us out of that bondage that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. Do you see? He made a distinct, uh, this, like, distinction, distinguish, um, distinction. Sorry, between <laughs> the flesh and the spirit. Lord have mercy. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh 
but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Like I said, that for four said that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And then he told you, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You don't mind, you don't think about the things of the flesh. Like I was saying, clothes, cars, money, you know, things like that. Not to say that God won't give you these things. I'm just saying that that'll be your main agenda instead of seeking first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and everything being added unto you. You'll be out trying to seek your own glory, your own fame, your own money, things this, this such, you know what I'm saying? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. See, when you take something that's spiritual, like the book, like the Bible, that it, the, the word of God is spiritual. It's, his words are spirit and they are life, right? And so... You take something spiritual and you try to make it carnal. You, you, you try to, I know in all that getting, get an understanding. But for some reason, we take it carnally a lot more than spiritually. You know what I'm saying? We don't just look at the, some of us just look at the carnal aspect of it. But there's a spiritual principle in all these things. You know, and so we have to be able to discern and we have to be able to see it in multiple. God is a very multifaceted God. His words are multifaceted. It makes a lot of things happen at one time. You know what I'm saying? And so everything is happening right now, whether you know it or not. The the You may be sitting in your living room. Meanwhile, there's water moving somewhere in somebody's lake, somebody's river, somebody's ocean, right? Not somebody, but we know it belongs to the Lord. But I'm just saying, it's happening. The, the world is still yet turning. See, this is the word of God going into motion. It's move. It moves. God's word moves. It, it, it's a lie. It doesn't die. Everything that he said comes to pass it happens just like that whether you can see it feel it taste it it's happening uh -huh. and so you gotta recognize he's a very multifaceted God a lot of things I'm seeing it a lot of things happen at once but it's happening multiple things at one time <laughs> his word it's, it's the layers layers and honestly depending on where you're at whether you're in your flesh and, and um, whether you're in uh, like I said before whether you're in um, your soul or spirit it's just all depends are you trying to please what are you what what are you trying to please or what are you trying to accomplish are you trying to accomplish God's word or are you trying to accomplish yours you know your desire your destiny what you want what you how you want to live you know the things that you desire for yourself are you are you trying to accomplish what God is saying for you what he desires for you what he wants for you the vision he has for you you know what i'm saying it's like what are you trying to accomplish it says seven because the carnal mind is enmity against god 
for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You cannot please God in your flesh. You just can't. You can't. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. There it is. But ye are not in the flesh. Now he tells you who you are. I love it because God, he reassures you. Let me tell you something. You're not in the flesh. Now, those that may say, oh, no, but I am. Let's not give knowledge to the flesh right now. Because he just told you you're not. You know, you got to recognize it. It's, it's about who you surrender to. Am I choosing to surrender to God or am I choosing to surrender to what I desire, my flesh? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. You need the spirit, the Holy Spirit to dwell in you so that you can not operate in your flesh. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, if we didn't have his spirit, we would not be considered his children. We need to recognize the spirit that's living within us. Because he said already in his word that he's for all and in all. Okay? 10 says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Flesh, I ain't no debtor to you. You, I'm not in debt with you. He already paid the price on the cross for my sin. I'm not in debt to sin. I'm not a debtor. He says, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. You won't die living after the flesh. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So you start to live in the spirit. And yeah, you may, you may mortify the deeds of your body. So that you can live. In other words, I got to put this body in subjection with the word of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. We need to be Spirit-led. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the spirit is going to bear witness. You're the children. You're, you are a child of God. And if children and heirs. So if I'm a child of God. Then I inherit. There's something God has for me. He get. I inherit the things that my father. The things of my father. It comes down to my. To his children right. Whatsoever he has. whatever Whatsoever he owns. He owns everything, right? Therefore, I have, I'm a partaker of this thing. Then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified, be also glorified together. So we got to recognize. And I just said that he's not only for all, but in all. 
and that's uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 28. It says, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So here it is in Ephesians 4 and 6. One God. Let's let's go back. Matter of fact, we gotta this is one big thing we have to realize. Ephesians 4 and 4 it says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. A lot of us, we think, oh, this person is doing such a mighty work. God, I know he's in him. I know he's in them. I know he's in her. I know he's in and don't even recognize he's in you. He's in you too, right? So acknowledge him so he can direct us, lead us, and guide us. It says in Proverbs, let's go to three and five. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. So that shows you, you have to separate your understanding. Come up higher because his, high, his ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher, right? So we got to come up in our ways of thinking. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy getting, remember, get an understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Let's acknowledge the Lord. And he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So some of us feel like we know it all. We wise in our own eyeballs, right? And um, So wise that we err because we steady leaning on our own understanding. Um, Isaiah 55 8 through 9 it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher, than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts so that's why I said we got to come up higher if you want to know you know yes he lives in you and if you want to know if you're um, going and being led off the mind of Christ and doing things uh, according to his will and according to his ways well just know if it's higher than your thoughts, your ways, your emotions. If it's if you begin seeing things different and not in the way that you would normally see them, and it's not bad or evil, <laughs> nine times out of ten, that's God. You know, now you're starting to think 
on his level. And but you got to come up higher in order for you to get there. You know, the kingdom of heaven is in you. So we have to live in those like he said, you're seated already in heavenly places. We have to acknowledge where we are. We have to acknowledge what's happening. You know, leap, do what he tells you to do. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Be obedient. Surrender everything unto God. Let him lead you. Let him direct you. Let him guide you into all truth. You know, as we begin to see that our eyes be changed and we see how he sees and we do how he would have for us to do. Not listening to people because um, that was crazy. Um, the Lord, he had gave me yesterday. I want to make sure I named the name correct. Because I was, I was just like, well, it was about uh, Rehoboam and, um, matter of fact, let me see, yeah, it was in 1 Kings 12, and, um, you know, Rehoboam, he became a king, right? And so, um, he, you know, was trying to figure out, because the people was talking to him about, you know, how they made, and in four, 12 and 4 said, Thy fathers made our yoke grievous. Now, therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his yoke his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter and we will serve thee right so they were that people were coming to him look we gonna we gonna do right by you but we need you to do right by us your fathers and y'all didn't do us right so i was talking about the mishandling of people we don't always do people right. We need the love of Christ in our hearts. We need that heart of flesh, right? Instead of our hearts, we need the heart of the Father. And so the old man, he came up to the old man. And they told him <clears throat> in um, 6, it says, And King Rehoboam consulted with the old man. That stood before Sol Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? So, what do you say I should say to these folks, right? That's in my turns, like this. This is how I see the word. And they spake unto him, saying, This is how I get my understanding. If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. Listen, all you got to do is go in there, treat these people right, speak kind words to them, be good to them, and they will not leave you, they will not forsake you, they will, you know, be your servants forever, right? <laughs> And then the word says in eight, but he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. So those folks that, you know, like, oh, we was talking about that, that clay and we was talking about, you know, going back to Egypt. These he goes back to Egypt with them basically. He go back to those people that he was hanging out with. He didn't want to listen to the old folks. No, nah, let me what man, what y'all say? The your homies, the people that you grew up with, right? And uh, which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye what we may answer this people? So he said, We 
Look, y'all gonna help me answer this question to the people. What should I say? Right? Who have spoken to me saying, make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. What should I say to them folks? And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him saying, thus shalt thou speak. Speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy fathers made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thou thus thou shalt say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's ones. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Listen, all of a sudden, here you are asked the wrong people. You got this position. This is your homies. They about to, oh, they going to tell you. Let me tell you something. We going to make it even worse. What you talking about? My little finger is going to be thicker than my father's loins. Look, they going to find something harder. Let's, let's be hard with it. We going to make it even worse. Let me, let me, let's talk, you know, some stuff to them. Oh, that's what you think? Oh, they did this to you. Well, let me show you what I'm going to do to you, basically. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to you, uh, to your yoke. My father have chased you with, chased you with uh, whips, but I will chase you with scorpions. Look, yeah, you thought those whips was bad. Let me what, watch when I whip out these scorpions. I'm gonna put on y'all since y'all thought y'all had got something from my father. Let me show you how much worse this is gonna be, right? Mm, so Jer Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, "Come to me again this third day." And the king answered the people roughly. See, they, they say, speak kindly to the folks. You know, speak good to them. He came rough and forsook the old man's counsel that they gave him and spake to them after the counsel, counsel of, I know I said counsel, the console. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, of the old men saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chased you with whips, but I will chase you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hardened not the people, hearkened not the people. For the cause was from the Lord. That he might perform his saying which the Lord spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So here it is. He didn't know, he didn't realize him talking this stuff to these people, he was speaking ill to something that was from the Lord. You got to be careful on how you answer things. You got to be careful on how you think on things. Because you don't know how you're being tested. I know the Lord had gave me. I'm going to read this last one. Um, last two. In fact, this last one um, on 16. And then I want to say um, about what the Lord had gave me on that matter. So when all Israel saw that the king heart hearkened not unto them the people answered the king saying what portion have we in David neither have we inheritance 
we inheritance in the son of Jesse to your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. They left. Let me tell you. You got to be careful as to how you treat people, especially God's people. You, you, period, just people, you know, you, you got to be careful. You can't, that's why I was talking about mishandling folks. You got to be careful on how you respond because that could be a test for you on how you receive other people that just may very well be your test if you receive them or not how you treat them be careful for nothing Watch how you treat folks. That could be your test. Philip, Philippians, sorry. Four and six, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be be made known unto God. You got to be careful for everything. It says be careful for nothing. What you see as nothing, be careful for it. You might see someone and you might misjudge them. They could be your answer. They could be the answer to your prayers. Be careful. Be careful on how you treat people. That's why I was talking about not mishandling folks. That could be, very well be your test. This was his test. Okay. But give these words to the people to say to him. And I want to see how he responds to it. Now he knows your heart. You can't take it back. Because this is your heart. This is this is what you chose to do. Not so much it may not be him per se, because he asked. He asked, but sometimes we don't ask nobody. We just say what's in our hearts and what we say as a response may be used against you. Maybe why you ain't growing. Maybe why you haven't gone higher. It's because the words that have come out of your mouth. And, and even me, I have to watch my words. You know, I have to speak good. And just like here, it had to speak good to the people. It's what the old men, that's wisdom. And if you do them, if you treat them right, if you talk to them right, they will serve you forever. There's certain people that will ride with you forever, but you got to treat them right. Otherwise, you will run them away. Preferably, that if that right there will be help to someone, if nothing else. You know, there's been a lot said. So, I'm going to end this. Um, hi, God bless everybody. I pray all is well with you. Normally, I would say this is purposely designed. I'm Angela. and But God bless you. 
Um, sorry I didn't address like normal, but I just had to get this word out, especially at the beginning, because I, I saw just as plain exactly what was going on. You know, we just have to trust God, trust him in the process, you know, know what he's doing, you know, trust him for everything. Trust God. I don't care what it look like. I don't care what people say. Don't listen to everybody else. Just listen. Learn to tune that out. You tune it out. Lord, what do you say? Because that's what I want to know. I want to go off of what you say. When I go off of people, I've gone off of people for years of my life. Never would I make my own decisions. Most of the time, some of so I got to a place where I didn't just go off of what people said. I'll go listen to them and then, you know, kind of go off of what they said, but not, you know, like that was like a last resort per se. But don't be a people pleaser. Don't go over here, you know, and if you listen to godly counsel, that's one thing. Praying them coming together, praying about it, and then telling you with us, said the Lord. That's one thing. But just opinion of men or their common sense of what they believe, that is not higher. You can come up with that yourself. But we got to go higher. We got to go to the Father. Father, what do you say about this matter? Just like, I mean, I'm just learning how to trust God in everything and go to him if I have a question or if I want to do something instead of being spontaneous and just doing it just doing it could have possibly got me killed if I would have just got out the car hey sir you know just talking to this man this man has scissors in his hand easily could have did something not to say that he would I don't know him or his character I'm just saying he showed me the money blowing in the wind but he told me what to get right I could have got a tent brought it out because I wouldn't have been able just to hand it out the, win the window I would have had to drag that out the car he said no he didn't show me to do that but he told me to give him $50 so I was obedient and when I seen him grab them scissors I dropped the $50 out the door so that I could still say, hey, I gave it. I gave it. It's there if you want it. You don't have to have it. It's up to you if you desire to have it or not. But it's here. You know, and sometimes that's us. God will be placing something in your hands. He'll put it right before you. And it's a choice. If you want to get it or not, it's up to you. Just like these words, the things that I'm speaking right now is a choice to, for you to receive it or not. But I pray that you do. I pray those that have been listening, those that have listened, those that are going to listen later, that they will make a choice and decide. To listen to God, to put him first, to surrender everything to whatever it is that he's doing, whatever he wants to do through you, in you, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever. When it comes to people going to him and asking him, Lord, is this of you? God, what do you say about this individual? Instead of just coming up with your own thing or going to other people and saying, what do they say? No, stop. What God, the, God is, look, his opinion matters even more than yours. Even more than your flesh and your soul. What the, does say the Lord? What does he say? about it about the circumstance you can sit there and listen to somebody's issue 
And it may sound horrible. But if God says hold on, you better tell him to hold on. I don't know why. I know you're going through this. But God says hold on. He's going to bring you out. He's going to bring you through. Hold on. But if he tell you, tell him to let go. And you may not understand it. And you may be trying to, some people be trying to go around it and put their own stuff out there. Instead of going to the Lord and saying, God, what do you say? This person could be in an abusive relationship. They may not tell you that. They might just say, God, deliver me out of this relationship. And then you telling them to go back to get killed. Then their blood is in your hands. No. Lord, what do you say about the situation? current father what do you say about this situation what would you have for me to say to them what would you have for me to do if you want any me to do something for you or what do you have for me to do for them i just saw a bad situation and said lord what will you have for me to do oh god have mercy oh my lord have mercy Help us, God, to ask you, what should we do? What do you say about this matter? What do you say about this person? What do you say about this thing? God, what do you say? I know what this person says. I know what that person says. But God, what do you say? What is the most important thing to you? Is it people or is it God? Is it what they say or is it what God says? That's the question. Are you fighting against him? Are you kicking against the pricks like Paul? Or are you in complete and utter surrenderance unto him like Mary? What do you say? God, what do you say concerning these things? God, all these things are up against me. But Father, what do you say? And that is the question. That's the question. We can run with everything. We can run with our emotions. We can run with our feelings. We can run with our desires. Or we can run to God. And we could ask him, Father, what do you say about these things? What do you say about this situation, God? What do you say? Not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Father, what do you say? God, help us. Help us, God, to totally surrender unto you. And do what you tell us to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. God I thank you for your love. Your grace. Your power. Your strength. Your might. your Just everything about you. Father I thank you. And I bless you on today. I thank you Lord God. Hallelujah. That your word says. You'll never leave us nor forsake you. Th- forsake us. God I thank you. I thank you Lord. For your grace. I thank you Lord God. For your mercy. I thank you for how you. Your long suffering with us God. And your patience with us. God I thank you how you build us up. Even now, God, Father, feel the answer to the soul. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Whatever did the soul that I say. He thought of the Ashandala Liente. Either than I. Oh, Sandala Liente. Oh, God, whatever you say, Father, help us, God, to receive it. Help us to believe it. Help us to have that faith, hallelujah, in you, Lord God, that you are able to do the exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to your power that worketh in us. Father, help us, oh God. Help us, God, to see how you would have us to see, to do, to walk, Holy Spirit, how you would have us to walk, 
Oh, God, help us to be obedient. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, continuously renew our mind, God. Help us, oh God, to be in complete and utter surrender unto you. Help us to surrender all our mind, our will, our emotions, everything, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, let your will be fulfilled. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Father, from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. God, we thank you, Father. For today, we thank you, Father, for what you've done. We thank you, Father, for what you've said. Lord God, I just pray that this word will continue to say, oh God, to dwell, Lord God, in the minds and in the hearts of your people, that they will be converted. Hallelujah. Oh, converted unto your will, Lord God, your way, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Help us, oh God, to take on your mind mindset to go higher in you in your ways of thinking help us oh god in the mighty name of jesus to have our hearts prostrated with the heart of flesh oh god that we we have your heart or god a clean heart and a renewed spirit hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus we thank you father for your holy spirit lord god a renew oh god our minds hallelujah help us have think in and with the mind of christ in the mighty name of jesus we acknowledge we have your mind so father help us to think the way you think help us to to speak the way you would have for us to speak, to go to the places that you would have us to, to go, to do the things that you would have for us to do, even now in Jesus' mighty name. Help us, oh God, in Jesus' name. God, we thank you and we give you praise. We give you all the glory for it all belongs to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank God and amen and amen. Man, Lord, have mercy. I thank God for y'all. I thank you for today. Uh, I thank God for today. I thank him for um, all that are listening. I will listen. And I just pray that you will be blessed. And until next time, God bless.